You truly are one of the most genuine people I've ever met. You remain positive through every circumstance, and you constantly see the good in everything and everyone. You shine God's love in all that you do, and that is apparent to all of those who know you. I remember the days when we were both walking through seasons of uncertainty. You knew that God was teaching you something through your season of being single, and I knew that God was teaching me something through our season of infertility. I remember so many days praying over each other in the break room, standing in faith for one another. Now here we are today. I'm expecting our rainbow baby, and you are marrying the man of your dreams. There's no real special story to how we became friends, but everything after is very more special than, than the way it all happened. Um, I honestly just messaged Sarah on Instagram, and I was like, hey, we seem like we could be friends. And then we met for coffee, and she hopped in my car, we went to TJ Maxx, and we were friends every day after that. Sometimes we have to complain to each other about our husbands, our now husbands. And I appreciate that about, about you, that you can sit and listen to anybody about anything they're going through. So five years ago, when I met Kaylee and fell in love and knew that she was the one I would spend forever with, I saw the way you looked at us and knew that you longed to have that same thing. You wanted true love and happiness and marriage, and you pursued that just like I did. So I started praying for you all those years. I prayed that God would send you the right one, the one that would make you happy and complete you. I prayed for your one, your person, and he finally answered that prayer when you met Sarah. Cameron, I met you in August ooh, 2018. Um, life came at me fast. And you put a roof over my head. Um, I can confidently say that I wouldn't be here without you. I know that God has good plans for you and your now wife. Um, and you will forever be in my heart and in my prayers. And I will wish nothing but the best for both of you.
wanted to welcome everybody here today to such an amazing occasion. <laughs> we might need to start with the prayer to get these two through. But... Man, that is just one of the most beautiful entrances. Uh, everybody looks so fantastic, man. Um, this couple is just so amazing. And um, I'm supposed to help them pray through it and help it help keep it together, but Cameron had me tear up. Uh, I just, I've never seen a couple that is just absolutely head over heels like you guys. What a beautiful thing. Uh, I was just so caught up in it, and as you, you were almost here, I was like, oh, I better get my, my notes out. Uh, it's time to start. Um, man, what an honor to get to stand here with you guys today. So ladies and gentlemen, we're gathered here today in the sight of friends and family and in the sight of God to celebrate one of life's greatest moments, giving recognition to the worth and the beauty of love and to add our best wishes and blessings to the words that will unite Cameron Mayberry and Sarah Hammond in holy matrimony. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? I do. <laughs> All right, well, give your hugs. No, you better take that. Yep. Cameron and Sarah are about to be joined in marriage. If there is anyone here who sees why this couple should not be wed, you should have long since said something. It's way too late. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you can go ahead and be seated. Before we start, I just wanted to take a moment, how we got here, how I got here, I wanted to say something about Mr. Monty White, Pastor Monty White, who was um, such an amazing mentor to Cameron, and um, just a special friend he was to all of us, and they had actually had Mr. Monty, as we all call him, to, uh, he was all set to do their ceremony, and he passed away just a few months ago. And he was such a, a, a beacon to so many folks at our church. And if anybody knew him, he inspired you, period. And he was such an amazing man to lots of, lots of young men. He took a lot of young men under, their, under his wing. And I've got some big shoes to fill, and I'm, I'm honored, man. I'm honored so much that you guys asked me to do this. Marriage is the most important of all earthly relationships. And it's got to be entered into reverently, thoughtfully, and with understanding of its sacred nature. Your marriage must stand by the strength of your love and the power of faith in each other and in God. A thread by itself is strong, but when two threads are woven together in opposite directions and they come together, they form something far greater than they ever could individually. A beautiful tapestry begins to take shape. So, so your two lives, when merged together, will make a beautiful marriage. I'm just chuckling because they're already whispering to each other. <laughs> From the Song of Solomon, All night long on my bed I looked for the one my heart loves. I looked for him but did not find him. I will get up now and go about the city through its streets and squares. I will search for the one my heart loves. So I looked for him but did not find him. The watchmen found me as they made their rounds in the city. Have you seen the one my heart loves? Scarcely I, had I passed them when I found the one my heart loves. I held him and I would not let him go till I had brought him to my mother's house to the room of the one who conceived me. Daughters of Jerusalem, I charge you by the gazelles and by the does of the field, do not arouse or awaken love until it so desires. And it so desires today. This is y'all's day and love is taking on a whole new title, a whole new level, a whole new position today to start a family, a unit. A good marriage has to be created. It's not something that's magical that just happens just because we do this ceremony today. In marriage, sometimes the little things are the biggest things. Never being too old to hold hands, always remembering to say I love you at least once a day, never going to sleep angry. It's standing together and facing the world. It's speaking words of appreciation and demonstrating gratitude in thoughtful ways. It's having the capacity to forgive and to forget. It's giving each other an atmosphere in which each can grow. 
It's a common search for the good and for the beautiful. It's not only marrying the right person, but it's being the right partner for that person. And this is the most important thing. Love is not a feeling. Right now, y'all are just giddy, right? <laughs> um, but love is an action. And marriage is a commitment. And the Christian word for commitment, and he's even more solid than the word commitment, it's covenant. And y'all are entering into a covenant today. Be committed to one another in holy matrimony, to your families, to each other. And when differences arise, and they will, be committed enough to say, we're gonna work through this. We're gonna work through all of this stuff. And it's easy to be committed when you're just dating, when everything is going great. But sometimes the days come when infatuation may not be there. Excitement just isn't like it has been. Instead of Cameron just wooing you and romancing you, you have to wash his dirty socks. Or, uh, yeah, that takes a lot of commitment. Um, or when you're dating, and she just looks so, so perfect. He told me earlier when I said, your bride looks beautiful. And he goes, that doesn't surprise me at all. I'd be shocked if she didn't. But sometimes you wake over in the morning and she doesn't look the same as, <laughs> as she does today. <laughs> but marriage is seeing each other at our worst and still loving each other with our best. Yeah. And men, so this is for you. God holds us responsible for keeping our families together. The word husband is a Latin word that actually means house band. It's like a rubber band that just wraps around everything and keeps it together. Solomon was a great example for us men. He was the wisest man that ever lived. And he started every day by blessing his wife. It's a very, very wise thing to do. He would say there are many beautiful women in the world but you excel them all. He started every day by praising his wife. Compliments are like glue that holds a relationship together. We all go through difficult times, but if our spouse knows how much we appreciate them, love them, then it's going to make it far easier to get through those difficult times. And each of you are now just not living for yourselves individually, but living for the other one as well. They have written their own vows. Oh God. So let's go ahead and open up this part of it in prayer so they'll, uh, they'll make it through. Y'all join me in prayer, giving them some strength and encouragement. Lord Jesus, we love you, we honor you, we praise you. We give you this day, we give you this ceremony, and these vows are written to show how much the other loves the other. And Lord God, we do this in honor of you. Give them strength, give them peace, not just today in the ceremony, but all the days of their life. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, Sarah, I think you're going first. And I'll hold this for you. Sure, I think I can, can hold it. Can you hold it? I think I can hold it. Oh, gosh. Cameron Matthew Mayberry. Wow, this day is finally here. This is a day that God and I have talked about so many times. I was just never sure that it would come. When I began praying for you in 2012, I never knew the road God would take me down. But if you would have asked the same girl in 2017 if she'd be standing right here getting married to you, the answer would have been no. You see, I was done with dating, yet so desperately wanted to be a wife. I spent most of my single season crying or crying out to God, begging Him to give me a sign that you were real. Going into my second year of my single season, I was struggling with my mental health and had built a huge wall around my heart so high. Nevertheless, God gave me a vision of Jesus down on one knee and then confirmed that when a stranger confirmed it when a stranger prophesied over me that my future husband was coming. You think I would have shouted hooray and picked out my best evening gown, but I didn't. I became very scared. I had worked so hard letting God build back the girl torn down from abuse and despair. Then months later you showed up and you cheesily changed my life. <laughs> July 19th, 2019, you DM'd me in true Gen Z fashion and said, hey, my sister-in-law told me about this really pretty girl at Gaudi Me and I had to see her for myself. Just wanted to say hey. <laughs> I remember looking at my coworkers saying, this boy is bold. A week later, 
We went on our first date where you infamously broke a glass in half. Don't know how still. I knew too, uh, you knew deep then that I was the one for you, but I and I knew too, but I was too scared to let anybody back in. Cameron, you made it so easy too. Every day since July 26, you have wholeheartedly pursued me with a fire and purity only Christ could give and slowly started taking down the wall I'd so long had around my heart. You were patient and kind with my stubborn soul. You honored me and cherished me more than anyone ever has. You fought for me in the physical and in the spiritual, and you still do. This is your character and this is your heart and ultimately is what still makes me fall for you today. You are my biggest answered prayer and biggest blessing. So today, I'm so honored to stand by your side and to become your wife. I cannot wait to see what all we do and conquer for the kingdom. So today, I have a few things that you have taught me that are my vows to you. I promise not to take life so seriously. If you've ever taught me anything, it's that laughing sometimes is the best medicine and it can solve any problem, that life is not worth being angry over. To always go to God first for everything because you have shown me through every season, through every prayer, that God, if God is not at the center, we have nothing. I cannot promise you I will be the best wife in the world. I cannot promise you I will cook every night and that I'll keep a clean home and that I'll do laundry <laughs> on time or that there won't always be something in the dryer that I always press restart. <laughs> but I can promise you I will wake up every single day and I will choose to love you and I will choose to be your wife. <sighs> mm. <laughs> you ready? Maybe. <laughs> Uh, mine's definitely not that long, but uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Standing in front of you today, I can't believe that this day has finally come. To be able to call you mom forever is an honor and my dream come true. Although I've known for a long time that I would one day marry you, to be in this moment right now is crazy and amazing. It seems like just yesterday, I was standing outside of Silver Grizzlies, trying to calm my nerves before meeting you for our first date that I'd finally convinced you to go on. <laughs> From the moment I laid eyes on you in that coffee shop, I knew that you would one day be my wife. And here we are. You have been by my side through some of my hardest times, and I'll forever be grateful for that. You love me fiercely, and most importantly, you love me when I don't love myself. You pursue me in our future daily, and you forgive me time and time again. I can't thank God enough for bringing us together and for trusting me with his daughter. I don't know what tomorrow may bring, but one thing I do know is that I'll be by your side no matter what. You are my best friend, and I will love you forever. I will love you when it's easy, and I'll love you even more when it's hard to. I can't promise you that I'll be the perfect husband, but I do promise that I'll wake up every day choosing to love you. I promise that if you ever grow weak in this crazy life, I'll be right there beside you to help you fight. I promise to put you first, no matter the day, and to make your happiness my priority. I promise to nurture your goals and ambitions and to ce celebrate your victories. I promise that I will strive to show you every day that I know exactly how lucky I am to have you in my life. I promise you that I will plant our marriage on God and His love. I can't promise you that it will always be easy to love me. And I can't promise you the world. However, I promise you my world and all that it holds. I want you to know that I make these promises not out of obligation, but out of my eternal commitment and devotion to our future and to you. God. Amen. Oh, that was good. <laughs> good job, guys. <laughs>
<laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> Both of you, that was incredible. Absolutely incredible. So Sarah, do you take Cameron to be your husband? Do you promise to love, honor, cherish, and protect him, forsaking all others and holding only unto him forevermore? I do. Cameron, do you take Sarah <laughs> to be your wife? Do you promise to love, honor, cherish, and protect her, forsaking all others and holding only unto her forevermore? I do. <laughs> <laughs> Do you promise to stop giggling after everything I said? I can't promise, can't promise, that. That. promise that. I wouldn't want you to. You guys, uh, from 1 Corinthians, I know it's read at every wedding, but it's just one of my all-time favorite scriptures about love. And this was actually written for the church. It was written for all of us, how we're supposed to all treat each other, actually. But it's certainly fitting for a couple about to be married. Love is very patient and kind. It's never jealous or envious. It's never boastful or proud. Love is never haughty or selfish or rude. Love does not demand its own way. Love is not irritable or touchy. Love does not hold grudges and will hardly notice when others do it wrong. Love is never glad about injustice, but rejoices whenever truth wins out. If you love someone, you'll be loyal to them no matter what the cost. You will always believe in them, always expect the best in them, and will always stand your ground in defending them. And now, as one of their first gestures in their union, they have elected to take communion. <laughs> ceremony in this union without acknowledging you putting you first so we take up the sacraments right now this is your body broken for us we'll never forget and lord god we come to you now to take up the cup lord god it's your blood that's poured out on us father god our sins are clean they're wiped away in jesus mighty name praise you. We praise you in the morning and we yes. praise you in the evening. Yes. We praise you in our comings and our goings. Yes. Lord God, you're all around us yes. and we lift you high. Yes. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Well, who has the rings? Oh. <laughs> Just a little bit more. Almost there. is a symbol of the unbroken circle of love. Love freely given has no beginning and it has no end. There's no giver and there's no receiver for each is the giver and each is the receiver. May these rings always remind you of the vows you've taken today. Cameron, take her ring. Place the ring on her left hand and repeat after me. Hi Cameron. Hi Cameron. Take thee Sarah. Take thee Sarah. To be my wife. To be my wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. For richer or for poor. For richer or for poor. In joy and in sorrow. In joy and in sorrow. I promise my love to you. I promise my love to you. 
And with this ring, and with this ring, I take you as my wife. I take you as my wife. For as long as we both shall live. For as long as we both shall live. Replace that. The camera's left hand. Hi, <laughs> Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Take thee, Cameron. Take thee, Cameron. To be my husband. To be my husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. For richer or for poorer. For richer or for poorer. In joy and in sorrow. In joy and in sorrow. And I promise my love to you. And I promise my love to you. And with this ring. And with this ring. I take you as my husband. I take you as my husband. <laughs> 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 For as long as we both shall live. For as long as we both shall live. <laughs> so this 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 marriage. <laughs> just trying to finish this up here. Uh, this marriage, it's actually not just between two. A marriage is between three, and it's like a triangle, where Cameron is here, Sarah's here, mm -hmm. and God is here, and. As long as you each move closer to God, in the illustration of the triangle, when you move closer to God, you automatically draw closer to one another. Always keep God, not just at the forefront of your marriage and your family, but individually. Seek God every day. That's your foundation. Because without God, you have no love. Because God is love. So let us pray. Father God, we truly, truly adore you. Only you could provide a love so overflowing as what's been demonstrated today. It's only by your foundation, by your forgiveness of sins, that this love exists. And Lord God, we pray now that you protect this union, you protect this couple. When times are tough, keep them strong. When they grow weary, keep them strong. When they think they can't go another step with whatever life may bring keep them strong we place our feet on you our rock our creator our maker the alpha the omega be magnified glorified and lifted high in this union in Jesus name you guys the Bible says when God joins you together in marriage you are now one unit it uses the word asunder which means to be divided into two parts destroying the union of one breaking it apart back into two in mark 10 it says at the beginning of creation god made them male and female for this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and the two will become one flesh so they are no longer two but one unit under god therefore what god has joined together let no man put asunder allow me to offer you a blessing from God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So by the power of the almighty God, along with his blessing and the blessing of all of us gathered here today, it is my pleasure to pronounce you husband and wife. <laughs> <laughs> Turn and face the crowd, ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you Mr. and Mrs. Cameron Mayberry!
know that God has good plans for you and your now wife, and you will forever be in my heart, and I will wish nothing but the best for both of you. I haven't known you that long, but you've been a great friend to me, bro, and you're already getting married? That's crazy. But you and Sarah are really good together. Congrats, man. You have achieved one goal to achieve some bigger and better ones crushed together. I love you guys. To Cameron and Sarah. Right through. Right. Who is more romantic? Hey, just a heads up. You're messing up already. Jenny, you see a camera right there? We're gonna talk and I want you to look at that. Do you know what it means when you catch the garter? What does it mean? It means you're the next one to get married. <laughs> For me, my single season was a huge part of mine and Cameron's testimony. And so, to bless y'all in your single seasons right now, um, I want to pray over you guys. Lord, I pray for each individual lady that's standing over here, God. 